Yes, so might uh, call me. I'm based in Berlin. Uh, I'm a polyglot, uh, founder of the Polyglot Gathering. Uh, and um, like, I guess, everyone who's, who will be watching this, I really love languages. And so for me, um, let's say being a polyglot means have, uh, when you get the opportunity to have a Michelle Thomas lesson in Irish and Irish was never on your list of languages to learn, you just jump for it because it's a language and it needs learning. <laughs> Super, uh, thanks, Judith. Um, it's, 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 it's really going to be lovely to teach both of you this evening. I'm so uh, so happy to be teaching two polyglots. Um, and uh, I think, I hope you'll enjoy this method. Um, it's a nice way to learn a language, I think. Relaxing. We, we'll have fun. <laughs> so anyways, my name is Patricia, and I'm here in uh, Galway, in the west of Ireland. And um, along with my colleague, Aish Yule we created the Michelle Thomas Foundation Irish course that was just released this year. So it's an eight hour audio only uh, course to get you started learning Irish. Oh, um, my name's Alex Rawlings. Uh, I'm super excited to be here learning Irish. I, I've, um, I'm originally from the UK and to my shame, I don't speak any indigenous British, British or Irish languages apart from English. Um, but I currently live in Barcelona uh, where I'm working as a documentary filmmaker and one of my fields of interest is minoritized languages such as Catalan. I've also been working recently in Greece with the Tsakonican language uh, which is the only surviving descendant of the ancient language of the Spartans. So I'm super super excited to be finally learning some Irish and I'm really excited to try the super fun Michelle Thomas method. Maybe I could tell you a little bit about the Celtic languages just to start us off. Uh, so as you may know they were spoken all over Europe, all over mainland Europe, uh, way before the Romans came to town and then they kind of uh, got wiped out with the expansion of the Roman Empire, basically. So they were spoken in, in the Iberian Peninsula, Celtic languages all across mainland Europe, as far east as like modern day Turkey, spoken in the Balkans. And now we just have the, these modern Celtic languages left in the British Isles and in Brittany. So, uh, and then of course, so in Britain, in Britain then, um, when the Anglo-Saxons started to arrive, they brought the Germanic languages into the south of England and that, there we go, when English developed from those Germanic languages that they spoke. Um, and then the Celtic languages got kind of pushed to the sides and remained in Wales, in Cornwall, in Ireland and in um, Scotland. And then, um, you might wonder why there's a Celtic language also being spoken in Brittany in, um, in France. Basically, when the Anglo-Saxons started to arrive, they put some, it's believed that there were migrations then from probably Wales or Cornwall towards uh, Brittany. And they brought the Celtic language back into Brittany, uh, Celtic language back into Brittany with them from there. So basically, we've two kind of um, subgroups in, the Celt in these Celtic languages. And in, in one, we have Irish, Scottish Gaelic and Manx, which was spoken in the Isle of Man, which is midway between Britain and Ireland. And it's kind of been revived in, in, in late in recently. And um, those three are quite similar. Like I think uh, if I read a passage in Scottish Gaelic, I, I, would, I would be able to understand it. And then on the other branch, we have Welsh and Cornish and uh, Breton. And they're, they're quite, quite different, but again, they're, they're a Celtic language, but a different branch to the Irish and the Scottish branch. Um, have you used the Michelle Thomas method before? That was my other question for you. Or, yeah, I have. Um, yeah, okay. I, I like it uh, a lot, uh, which yes. is saying something because I'm, I'm not generally an auditive uh, learner. Yeah. Um, but uh, I really like the, uh, the Michelle Thomas method as a way to uh, quickly get into uh, useful uh, chunks uh, yeah. that I can reuse and uh, start conversation with. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a nice introduction to a language, I think. All right. I actually um, two two of us made the put the course together, myself and a, a friend of mine, Eilish Niul, and uh, we we I, I had used it for Spanish, and there was nothing similar available for Irish. And um, I've been teaching Irish to adults, and that was kind of what really made me want to make it available for Irish. So. So it's just out now, actually. Yeah. So basically, it's, it's, it's called the Michelle Thomas Method because it was developed by this um, man called Michelle Thomas. And he was born in 1914. And um, I've actually just finished reading his biography. So I'm like, 
full of Michel Thomas uh, uh, stuff at the moment. And um, he had a really, really interesting life. He was born in, um, into a, Jewish, a wealthy Jewish family in Poland and he, in 1914, and he moved, he, he got his high schooling in Germany. And then I guess it's coming into the 1930s and it's not a good time to be Jewish in Germany. And he ends up uh, kind of becoming a refugee and, and, and he ends up in France. And I think around 1937, he went back to visit his family in Poland and uh, kind of to warn them as well that they needed to think about getting out. And that was the last time he saw them. He didn't succeed and he didn't succeed in persuading them to leave or maybe they weren't able to leave. I'm not sure. And then um, he's now in France, I guess he's in his kind of late 20s, 30s, and he worked for the French resistance um, in, in, in Vichy, France. And then uh, he was captured a number of times during the Second World War. And towards the end of the Second World War, he started to work with an American army unit. And he, he, his involvement was uh, that because of his knowledge of languages, he was very useful at gathering intelligence after the war. And, you know, when they're trying to uh, uh, capture, I suppose, war criminals and prosecute people and all that kind of thing. Um, and uh, eventually he moved to the States, uh, you know, a few a couple of years after the Second World War. And when he gets to Hollywood, he sounds as like a real larger than life character as well, by the way, but he set up, he sets up a language school and he started to teach languages to, um, to Hollywood stars. And, uh, but his philosophy really for teaching languages was that, uh, really anybody can be taught anything and he felt very strongly that education was the way to prevent another uh, like he felt that uh, a lot of the reasons why the second world war happened was because of a lack of education and people not feeling that they could achieve as much as they needed to in life and all of this racism and kind of things happened as a result of that. So he wanted people to be able to be educated and he saw languages as a way of showing people that, that we can learn, that we have so much capacity for learning. And languages are a good way to do that because very often it's learning something entirely new and we all start at the same level when we start learning a language. So uh, he had a really fascinating uh, life story, but he died in 2005, I think. So he was about 90 years old. So um, I think um, I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, explanations about the Michelle Thomas method. Well, the first thing about it is that learning happens best. I think we all know this in a stress-free environment. So you need to make sure you're relaxed um, no need to take any notes, no need to even try to remember. I'm going to guide you through this class. And so I want you just to uh, sit back, enjoy. I mean, stay awake. I can't tell you to just relax that much that you fall asleep or anything, but uh, definitely no note-taking and um, we build as, as we go. You'll see how it works. So I'll be giving you little prompts and asking you from time every, every so often, how do you say this? How do you say this? And uh, I guess we'll, we'll you know, we, you'll see how it builds as we go. Um, okay, I'm going to start with uh, some commands because uh, it's a good way to start a language. It's nice to be able to order people around the place. So if you wanted to say to somebody, go home, go. Go. The word is che, che, che. Can you say that, Judith? Che. che, che. Good, che. And the word for home, well, actually, it's homewards. So in English, we're saying go home, but in Irish, we're saying go homewards when we say go home. That word is awalia, awalia. It's like, a, think of the walls in a, in a house, awalia. So, Alex, how would you say go home? Che, awalia. Che, awalia. Good, good. Here's another command you might say to somebody, you might tell somebody to eat something or to drink something. So eat is i, i. Can you say that, Judith? I. I. And the word for it is a, a. So eat it, Alex would be? I, a. I, a. Good. And if you want to say uh, and, the word is agus, agus. So agus. how do you say go home and, Judith? Che awalia, agus. Good. So, uh, Alex, go home and eat it. Che uh, awalia, agus i a. Che awalia, agus i a. That's very good. Another command I'm going to give you is clean. Clean. Clean the car, for example. Clean is glan. So it's gleaming. Glan. 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 And the word for car is very similar. It's car. Car. 
And one more little word we have here is the word for the, and that's on, on. So how do you say the car, Alex? On car. On car, very good. And on now car. clean, yeah, clean the car. Glan on car. Glan on car, very good. Judith, go home and clean the car. Che avaye on glan on car. Excellent. Yeah, good. And the word for and is August. August. So che avaye August glan on car. Che avaye August glan on car. The word for now is anish. Anish. A n o i s. Anish. That's like sharpish. We're going to do it right now. Anish. So how do you say clean the car now, Alex? Oh my God. Um, glan on car anish. Glan on car anish. Great. Go home and clean the Sorry. car. Sorry, yep. could you say those A sounds again? I just need to hear them. Glan on car anish. Glan on car anish. Glan on car anish. Good. Good. Uh, Judith, go home and clean the car now. Uh, Excellent. Che Walia Agus Glan on Cor Anish. Um go home and eat it, Alex. Che Awalia Agus I A. Excellent. Che Walia Agus I A. If you want to say eat it now, how would you say that, Alex? I A Anish. I a anish. So if you want to say eat it now, it's i a anish. But if you want to say that in Irish, actually what you say, you put it at the end. So you say eat now it. I anish a. I anish a. I anish a. So go I home, anish. go home, uh, do this. Go home and eat it now. Well, that's actually go home and eat now it. Go home. <laughs> Excellent. Te walia agus e anishe. Te walia agus e anishe. Did we do drink yet? No. So the word for drink, telling somebody to drink something, is all, all. Drink it, Alex, would be? All. Wait, all a. All a. Drink it now, which is drink now it. Alex. All anishe. All anishe. Good. She says, go home and drink it now. Che avaya agus ol ol anishe. Che avaya agus ol anishe. Excellent. Oh, we'll just do one more here to finish us off with these little commands. Go home, clean the car, and drink it now, Alex. Oh, God. <laughs> go home, clean the car, and, and drink, what was the last one? Drink it now. Okay. Che awalia agus glan an car agus uh, drink it now. All yep. anishe. Excellent. Che awalia glan an car agus all anishe. That's great. Okay. If we want to tell somebody not to do something, in English we say, do not do that. Do not clean the car. Don't. So we bring in the verb do or uh, to do. So we don't need to do that in Irish, it's easier. We just put a little, a little word in front and that means don't, <laughs> don't do it. And that little word is no, no. If you write that down, it's N and A with an accent, no. No. So, yeah, so go home is, go che home, che awalia. Don't go home would be? No che awalia. Yeah, perfect, no che awalia. Don't go home now, Jesus. No che a anish. No che a anish. Come on, that's great. Uh, don't clean the car now, Alex. No, no glan and car anish. No glan and car anish. Brilliant. Okay, so we want to say don't drink it or don't eat it. So we have no i and we've no o. Now here you will get a, a slight, a, a soft h introduced here because Oh, all oh, it's hard to say. So we say no he he, no hole. Okay, don't eat it, don't drink it. Okay, Alex, go home. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll give you one more word. The word for but is ach, ach, a c h, ach. Go home, but 
don't eat it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Tea walia ach no ihe. Good. No ihe. Good ma. That's great. Tea walia ach no ihe. Go home, but don't eat it now, uh, Judith. Good, great. And remember, we're going to put the it at the end, so it's no he anishe. Te walia ach no he anishe. Come on. Um, uh, eat it, but don't drink it now, Alex. Ihe, ach, no, no way. Drink it, but don't eat it now. Uh, actually, eat it. You were doing well. Eat it, but don't drink it. Ihe, ach, no, all, anish. No, hole. Don't drink it. No, hole. No, hole. Ihe, ach, no, hole. Okay, come on. Good. Come on. So the word for bread is aron. Aron, A R A with an accent in Aron. So eat bread, Alex would be A Aron. I Aron. No, I Aron. I Aron, yeah. No, um, the word for the, as we know, is on, like we had the car was on car. Now, nouns in Irish are either masculine or feminine, same as in French and so many other languages. Um, when, a, when a noun is masculine, and begins with a vowel, like a ron. This is a masculine noun. And you put that before it. You then also put it, the letter T before the noun. So a ron is bread, but on taron becomes the bread. On taron. On taron. So eat the bread, Alex. I a taron. I on taron. I on taron. Come on. I on taron. I on eat... taron. Good. Don't eat the bread, Judith. No, oh, he on No, he on Good, excellent. Another word is uh, the word for water is ishka. Ishka. Actually, uh, you know the word whiskey in English? Mm -hmm. That's derived from the word for whiskey in Irish is ishka baha, the water of life. Ishka, and then we get whiskey from that, that basis. Okay, so. Um, Ishka is also a masculine word, Alex. So how do you say the water? Anthishka. Tishka, good. Ishka, Anthishka. Anthishka with a th. With a t in front, yeah, Anthishka. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, drink the water. All Anthishka. All Anthishka, good. Uh, one more uh, little noun is the word for egg is of, of. And if you saw that in writing, it would be U-B-H. Because BH makes a V sound, actually. So when he sounded, it sounded like earth in French. And I thought that's going to be easy to remember. But no, if I ever saw it written, I'd never remember it. Yeah, but you, uh, actually the, the spellings are quite uh, consistent, even more consistent than in English. So once you, you know that BH is going to make a V sound, if you see UBH, you'll be like, oh, <laughs> oh. easy. Let me okay. say that um, being more consistent than English is not exactly an endorsement. This no, English is a mess. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, now of is actually a feminine noun. Okay, so if we say the egg, nothing happens. So how do you say the egg? It doesn't change. On, on of. On of, okay. On of. Um, on of, yeah. So if you want to say eat the bread, but don't eat the egg. Jesus, eat the bread. Um, e on taran. Yeah. Uh, ach, uh, ach no e of. On of the egg. On, on of. of. Good. E on taran. Ach no he on on of. Come on. Okay. Um. So we've got water uh, on tishka. So we need another liquid, more interesting one maybe. So the word for wine is fian. Fian. Um, uh, so if you said uh, drink wine, Alex, it would be? All fian. All fian, good. Because all is fine. The, fi the fian is fine. Fine wine, exactly. Fian. <laughs> yeah, unfian, the wine. 
So um, the word for the wine, then it's it's unfeigned. So how do you say drink the wine, but don't drink the water, Judith? Oh, oh, oh uh, what, can you say the sentence again? What, what am I yeah, supposed to say? Sure. Drink the water, but don't drink the, ah, uh, the other way around. Drink the wine, but don't drink the water. Um, all uh, on fien. Mm -hmm. um, ach, no, all on no, what is it? What was it? Water? Remember, it's connected to whiskey. Yeah. Tishka on tishka. Tishka. Come on. Okay. All on fien, ach, no, all on tishka. All on fien, ach, no, all on tishka. Uh, one more for you, Alex, and then we'll move on a little bit. Um, go home, but don't eat the bread. Che awalia, ach, no, no, he, no, he, on tharon. Come on. Che ach, no, he, on tharon. Or go home, but don't drink the wine, uh, Judith. Che awalia, ach, no, all on fien. So after no and the next command beginning with a vowel like ol or i, then we make a he a, a, a sound, you know. No whole on fien. No he on taran. Come on. I on of ach no he on taran. Um now if we want to say uh in in English and in the Germanic languages we say um what is it? Mary eats bread. So the subject comes first and then the verb and then the object. S-V-O. Mary eats bread. Jack buys butter and so on. In the Celtic languages, this gets reversed. We put the verb at the start of the sentence. So instead of Mary eats bread, what we would be saying is eats Mary bread, buys Jack butter and so on. Okay, so we put the verb at the start of the sentence. Now, the word for you in Irish is to. Two. If you saw that written, it's T U with an accent. Two. And how we say you go is we take the command che and we add the ending on. So that becomes chain, chain, chain. So if we want to say you go, what we're saying is go you. How would you say that then, Alex? Chain two. Chain two. Chain two. Good. Chain two. Come on. Exactly. Chain two. So you go home, uh, Judith. Chain uh, to Awalia. Good. Chain to Awalia. And then we had another command. We had Glan for cleaning to clean the car. Glan. And I'm going to add the same ending here, which is on. How do you say you clean, Alex? Glan and two. Glan and two. Glan and two. So Judith, you go home and you clean the car. <laughs> Long sentence already. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, you go home. Um, ch uh, ch uh, to Avalia. Yeah. Uh, Agus, um, you clean the car. Um, gl uh, glan to uh, on car. Brilliant. Chain to Avalia. Agus glan to on car. That's really good. Um, the word for day is law. Law. L A with an accent. Law. And the word for every is gach. G -A -C -H, G-A-C-H, Gach. So every day, Alex, would be? Gach Law. Gach Law, that's it. You go home every day. Oh, God. Chain to Awalia, Gach Law. Chain to Awalia, Gach Law. You go home and you clean the car every day, Jesus. Chain to Awalia, Agus, you clean the car. Uh, uh, glan, uh, glan to, uh, on car. Um, what do you just say? Sorry. Every, every day. Yeah, I forgot. Already. The word for day is, is law, law. Gach law. Gach law. Yes. Gach law. Chain to a while, yeah. Glan to on car. Gach law. Brilliant. Um, so you can see the pattern here. How do you say you drink wine then, Alex? You drink. In, in the fin. Ah, that's you eat. Oh, oh. All in the fin. Come on. All in the fin. All in the fin. Um, All in the fin. Yeah. You drink wine every day? 
Olen tu fi an gach la. Olen tu fi an gach la. Um, you eat bread every day. You eat. So it was, I is eat. So you eat would be uh, Judith. Good. You eat bread every day? Um, I'm stumbling on the word for bread. Um, to, what is it? Something. Aron. 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 So that would be you eat the bread every day. Ihantu antaran gach la. And if you just want to say you eat bread every day, it's ihantu aran gach la. Super. Um, okay, uh, let me see now. What else? Uh, this poor person who cleans the car every day. Maybe we'll just do one more of those. You go home and you clean the car every day, Alex. A hard life. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jay into Awalia, uh, Agus, uh, Glan into Ancor, Gachlo. Guma, Jay into Awalia, Agus, Glan into Ancor, Gachlo. Brilliant. So then we want to say, um, for, uh, for me, we would expect it to be the word for me or for I, it's the same as May, May. M E with an accent May. Think of the month of May in summer. Okay, May. So Che and May. That would be I go. But actually, we push May in with Che and, and we make a new word. So the pronoun doesn't stand on its own anymore. Che and May becomes Che Yim. Che Yim. So it's like the command Che, and now we're adding Im with an M for me at the end. Che Yim. Che Yim. How do you say I go home, Alex? I go home every day, Jesus. I go home every day and I eat uh, bread, Alex. Good. I drink I drink water, Alex. Um, Olam. Uh huh. Good. What was uh, Ishka? Olam Ishka. Olam Ishka. Olam Ishka Baha. Olam Ishka Baha. Come on, come on. <laughs> if you want to say I like Ishka Baha, yeah, you say Isma Lom Ishka Baha. I like it. It's actually saying it's good with me, Ishka Baha. Isma Lom Ishka Baha. Okay. Come on, come on. Olam Ishka Baha. Dach Lom. <laughs> Now, if you want to say you don't do something, so olam is I drink, and I don't drink is ni olam. So I put this negative participle before it. Ni just means not. Not drink I water every day. Not clean I the car every day. Not I go home every day. Not go I home every day. So um, you want to say, uh, Alex, I don't drink whiskey every day. Well... <laughs> Uh, ni olam. Uh huh. Good. Ishkabaha gachlo. Come on, good. Ni olam ishkabaha gachlo. And do that. I drink water every day, but I don't drink whiskey every day. Um. Um. Olam ishka um. Ga. Good. Um, what is it? But is ach. Yeah. Ach ni olem ishkabaha gachla. Great. Excellent. Olem ishka gachla, ach ni olem ishkabaha gachla. Brilliant. Um, I don't know. I think will we shall we leave it there. Is, is that or do you want to keep going or? I, d I don't know quite how, how much time we should. We still got time because I would love to learn more. I don't know if you need to run out of Judith, but I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, brilliant. Okay, okay, super. Well, we, we can keep going for sure. Um, I'm just not sure how much to do. Uh, okay, perfect. So we have knee. Hit, hit us with everything. 
Huh? Hit you with everything. Oh my God. Everything. Everything. <laughs> um, you're doing great. You're really doing brilliantly, both of you. Um, so we have Ni Ihim Aran Gachla. Um, now, the ne- so this little negative word, Ni, um, when the next word, one thing that's particular about the Celtic languages is the sound of the start of a word can change. Okay. And we call that an initial mutation. And it's triggered by something happening before the word, okay? And this little word, ni, triggers a sound change on the next word coming after it. And if you saw it in writing, the change that would happen is if the next word begins with a consonant, a H, the letter H is inserted into the word in the second position of the word, okay? So we had chayim, which is T, E with an accent, I M, chayim. And then if we put ni in front of that to become, I don't go, ni, t sound changes to a he, a, a, a h sort of sound, ni heim, ni heim. And if you saw that in writing, it would be t h e for the i m, ni heim, awalia, gachlo. Okay, so we have to kind of learn what the sound changes are for um, nine of the consonants, the sounds can change. So the letter, the t sound can change to this. Huh, sound. It's hard to do it without putting it into a word. So, chayim ni heim. Okay. Let's look at another one. Glanim. Glanim is I clean. I don't clean is ni glanim. Glanim. You go back into your throat a little bit more. Glanim ni glanim. Um. So if you said to somebody, uh, you could say to somebody, you go home every day, but I don't go home every day, Alex. Mm-hmm. Chayin thi awalia gachlo. Mm-hmm. Right? Ach, ni heim mm-hmm. awalia gachlo. Good, great. Chayin thu awalia gachlo, ach ni heim awalia gachlo. Great. Um, here's another one for you, so Judith. Um, I clean the car every day, but you don't clean the car every day. Excellent, excellent. That's really good, yeah, yeah. You, you got it just there. Perfect. So glanam an kor gachlo ach ni glanan tu an kor gachlo, brilliant. So we don't need, to, we can't do this change with the with the command with the when the word begins with a vowel. So we don't need to worry about it. For example, um, if you want to say I drink water every day, but you don't drink water every day, Alex, how would you say that? I drink water. Um, Olam uh-huh. ishka gachlo. Yeah. Agus. But. Oh, ach, ni, um, <laughs> ni, olen. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I didn't change anything. Ni, ni olen, ishka, gachlo. Ni olen, tu, ishka, gachlo. Ni olen, tu, ishka, gachlo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. The shavu, this, we call it a shavu, a softening of the sound. Um, it can only happen when the, when the, the word, the next word after ni begins with a consonant. So it won't happen with the vowels. Olam ishka gachla ach ni olam tu ishka gachla. Come on. Um, let me think now. Uh, now we might like to ask questions. So you can see a pattern here. We have a ni, we put the negative participle in front to make a, a sentence, to make a phrase negative. We're going to do the same for questions. We have a little question word that we put at the start of the, of the sentence and then you hear, if someone hears the question where they go, ah, questions come in here. So uh, the question, instead of like in English, we use, we bring in a second verb. We say, did you, do you drink tea every day? Do you do this? We don't need to do that. It's much easier. We just have our little question word. And the question word in the present is on, on. It's the same as the word the, but it, here it's the question word. So on, so how do you say, um, you drink tea every day, or sorry, 
Tea is, by the way, tea. So there's a new word, tea. You drink tea every day, Alex, is? Uh, all in tea, tea, gachla. Yeah, the word for you is tu. Tu, sorry. All, all in tu, tu tea, gachla. All in tu, tea, gachla. Good. So do you drink tea every day? So what we need to do now is go, question word, drink you tea every day. What's the question word? An all in tu, tea, gachla. An all in tu, tea, gachla. Good. Um, and you might reply to that, um, to that. You might say, uh, I don't drink tea every day, but I drink water every day. Um, uh, no, no. Uh, uh, all in uh, tea, gachla. Um, ach, uh, all, all in, all in, um, what's this word for water, uh, it always turns water. me up. Ishka. Ishka, Ishka. Uh, olim Ishka uh, Gachla. Brilliant. Ni Olim Te Gachla, Ach Olim Ishka Gachla. Okay, the word for shop is shuppa, shuppa. Very similar. That's easy. That's easy, yeah. And the word for, so in English we have two words when we say in the shop, but in Irish in the is one word and it's sa, sa. How do you say in the shop? Um, uh, so how do you say, Alex, I'm having a momentary blip here. How do you say in the shop? Sa shoppa. Sa shoppa. Sa shoppa. Sa shoppa. Um, sa shoppa. Okay, here's another command. And the command is get. That, and the word for get is phi. 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 That means eat in Greek. Is it? Oh, okay, yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah. I bet it doesn't look I was the same. the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, five years, what my mother always used to say. F A is it just the, the I and you that are the same uh, pronouns as in Spanish, uh, or um, are the other ones also? I, I oh, like me and two. Yeah. Yeah. Me and two. May, May is for me. May. May, May. So phi. So how do you say get get tea in the shop, Alex? Uh, phi te sa shoppa. Yeah, get get tea in the shop now. We haven't used now in a while. Oh god, but, but um, does this one need to come in an unexpected place? No, it doesn't in this case. No. Okay. Uh, phi te sa shoppa anish. Phi te sa shoppa anish. Good. I get. Uh, Judith. So we had get is phi, but I get is I am phi am phi am. I get wine in the shop. Uh, uh, phi am uh, uh, phi am phi am phi am Yeah, phi am phi am phi am phi am Okay, Alex, and we might finish with this one. <laughs> I get wine in the shop, I go home and I drink it. Okay. <laughs> this is more of a memory challenge than an Irish challenge. <laughs> okay. uh, I get wine in the shop, I go home and I drink it. Fien fien sa shoppa. Agus. Che and Awalia. Agus. Olam e. A. No, Olam A. Good, excellent. Fien fien sa shoppa. Che and Awalia. Agus Olam A. Come on. Goma is good. You, you, Goma. That was super. Um, what was the way, way to say that I like something? Uh, isma lom. Isma lom. Isma lom. Isma lom. What's the word for the Irish language? Gwelga. Gwelga. So isma lom gwelga. Oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> You're an excellent student, both of you. Yeah, that was Thank super. I, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was great. To teach Thank you, you very much. I want to keep learning. I'm going to buy some Irish books. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, start with our course. <laughs> I will do for sure. I'm sure. I'm sure Sarah can give give you a copy. I hope. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna I think you're a great one. teacher. Uh, oh, I'm thanks. Definitely you. checking out the course. Oh, thanks so yeah, much. No, you explain everything in this very easy to digest way. And yeah. Yeah. I feel like I have a lot of Irish speaking friends who live in Barcelona, so I'm going to go and surprise them. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Um, 
So the word for goodbye is Sloan. 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 Oh, that was very easy. That means I mean, elephant in Russian. Oh, Russian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> elephant. Sloan. <laughs> So, yeah, Sloan Awalia. If you say somebody's leaving, you say say poem or Sloan Awalia. You could say that. Sloan, Sloan Awalia. We wouldn't really Sloan say it now because we're all just, you know, <laughs> at home. Do you also use this uh, for hello or is it something else? For hello? Now, that one is a little bit complicated. <laughs> 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 hello is Gia Kutch. Gia Kutch. It actually means God be with you. God. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Sloan. Sloan Awalian. Yeah. Brilliant. I can't remember. Thank you. But thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're really welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Thanks so much. I really enjoyed it. Sloan. Sloan. Take care, guys. Sloan.